This is Olbermann versus Trump. The United States of America has been the victim of a terrorist attack orchestrated by the President of the United States of America. This was Donald Trump's 9-11. He must be removed from office immediately. Even the National Association of Manufacturers, basically the most conservative element of corporate America, has called upon the Vice President to seriously consider invoking the 25th Amendment to replace Trump. Welcome. The events in Washington DC yesterday were disturbing. People on the left and the right both said it was a terror attack. I personally disagree because I think the mob just went crazy and wild. I don't think it was planned, therefore I don't think it was a terror attack. Crazy people like Keith Oberman though are comparing it to 9-11. And the question is, are we going to have similar repercussions, laws enacted to prevent the terror attack from happening again? Let's get into it. Both Facebook and Twitter have the platform the President of the United States. Every time I say it, it just sounds crazy. Shopify followed suit. That means that if you want to buy something on the online store from the Trump campaign, you can't. Because Shopify said so. Sorry. What's next? Banks are going to ban him? Why not cell phone companies and the internet? Why stop at that? Why not just give him the Epstein treatment? And hey, why hasn't Kamala Harris been the platform for bailing out rioters? Isn't that inciting violence? The Capitol Hill riot gave big tech even more authority to ban and censor people, but that's not enough for the mainstream media or for some politicians who want to cancel people both online and in real life. For example, while Ted Cruz is calling the riots a terror attack, something many on the left appreciate, AOC says that's not enough. Ted Cruz also said that people need to have cool heads, need to go home, and the people who are there need to be arrested, something that people on the left appreciate by AOC. No, no, no. AOC has said that Senator uh, Ted Cruz and Senator Hawley, both Trump supporters, need to be expelled from the Senate. It's really a very clever way to get two Republican senators out and get two Democratic senators in. Very cute, AOC. Now, let's not forget that during the summer, AOC was calling for and justifying riots. Remember when she said that marginalized people had no choice but to riot? I remember. But now, she's changed her mind. In fact, her communications director contacted Twitter in order to ban users who were citing AOC's old tweets promoting riots. I'm not making this up. It's crazy. I guess Alexandria Occasional Cortex learned a very valuable lesson here. Whatever you say on the internet will stay there forever, including this video. So like it, so people in 100 years can see what a video with a million likes looks like. Thank you for participating. But we shouldn't spend too much time on Alexandria Occasional Cortex because like her, the mainstream media and many people on the left have been changing their minds. On Twitter, we can see a lot of people who are rioting because criminals got shot who are now saying that it's good that people were shot because they were breaking the law. Why are so many people changing their mind? I wonder what's different here. During the Black Lives Matter and Antifa riots, the mainstream media actually described it as fiery but mostly peaceful. Over 32 people died and over $1 billion in damage. Yet, the mainstream media tried to best paint the best picture possible. Now, the New York Times has finally learned how to use the word mob and riot. Huh. Why? What changed? And then, CNN blessed us with this wonderful Anderson Cooper clip. Enjoy. Of completely unpatriotic, completely against law and order, completely unconstitutional behavior, it's stunning, and they're going to go back, you know, to the Olive Garden and to their the Holiday Inn that they're staying at and the Garden Marriott. And Did you catch how he's sliding at what he perceives to be poor people? Oh, they're going to go back to their Olive Garden. They're going to go to their Holiday Inn. Well, like, watch here from my ivory tower. Sorry, Anderson, we don't all have seven-figure salaries for talking fake news on TV all day. And since when does Anderson Cooper care about law and order and the Constitution? Fake news. That's all you are, and that's all you'll ever be. Am I the only one who remembers the riots during Trump's inauguration? Here's a little snippet.
about when Antifa was hitting cops over the head with bricks during the summer? Anderson Cooper had no problem with that. I wonder what changed. The mainstream media and the lefty politicians are now trying to find the critical race theory aspect to all this. They're trying to find the racism. And now they're claiming that anyone who stormed Capitol Hill was either a white supremacist or had a white privilege or something made up like that. The lady who got shot had no idea there was any risk of that happening. It never once crossed her mind that she might get shot while breaking into a room full of armed police officers. Whiteness gives you a false sense of security sometimes. Still shouldn't have happened though. I agree, it shouldn't have happened. And that whiteness thing, get it out of your head, it's virus. Then we had a member of the squad tweeting something even worse, Cori Bush. Here's what she had to say. Capitol Hill rioters would have been shot if they were black. They were shot. What are you talking about? How ignorant are you? Are you just trying to gaslight people? A woman was shot at point blank range. Her whiteness didn't help. And then I wanna show you a post from my personal Instagram feed. Here's what this person had to say. Black people can't even sleep in bed safely at night without getting shot and killed by police. But when white nationalists attempt a coup, suddenly cops can't even find their handcuffs. Why are these people white nationalists? First of all, second of all, handcuffs? No, you're right, they just shot them. The ignorance is oozing through these people's pores and it bothers. Four people died, a woman was shot at point blank range. All the deaths were rioters as opposed to the deaths in the BLM and Antifa riots, but no, white privilege. It makes me sick hearing these people be described this way and then I see BuzzFeed describe Antifa like this. The story did not name the men or provide evidence that they were involved in Antifa, a decentralized group of anti-fascists who go to protests around the US and whom the right often uses as boogeymen. Oh yeah, I forgot, the Democrats think uh, Antifa is just a myth. This is pure and absolute gaslighting. 9-11 gave us the Patriot Act. What's January 6th gonna give us? More security laws to make sure that the insurrection doesn't happen again? Will big tech be more emboldened to censor and ban people? I think so. Comment your opinions down below. Like, subscribe, it's free. See you next time.